Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. So today we are taking a look at the Fucos Odin 5. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so the Fucos Odin 5, a newcomer to the space, in what I want to be very clear, is a very crowded space. So this is quite obviously the same build volume as an Ender 3, so it's 235 by 235 by 250. Um, it does, however, have a number of advantages. Those of you who saw my live stream uh, where we unbox this, will no doubt remember that we needed to, um, that we needed, that we had an issue with the Y axis where it wasn't printing. So, the main board. The heart of this machine is an MKS Robin Nano and it runs 2208 drivers, um, which are soldered to the board. So what that meant was that we needed a new main board. Now, I wanna be really clear. When you are dealing with certain companies, I won't name names, but when you are dealing with certain companies, the chances of you getting a replacement are relatively non-existent. Um, they'll maybe send you a new screen or they'll maybe send you, you know, a couple of new cables or something like that. Any company is good or can be good very easily when nothing goes wrong. Right. When everything goes perfectly, it's very easy to be the model company. What matters is what do you do when things do go wrong? How do you treat your customers? How do you react to the community? And the answer with Fukus is that they sent me a brand new uh, main board from China inside of two days. I reported on that day, which was a Friday. I reported on that day that I had an issue with the main board and I needed a new one. We came off that live stream at about 9 p.m. Came off that live stream, went straight to Fucos, really sorry, got an issue, this is the main board. They asked me to do a couple of things. The first was reflashing the firmware, which they provided me with. Um, and when that didn't work, they said, right, you need a new main board. Monday morning, the main board that's in this turned up. That main board turned up with brand new drivers, because these, as I said, these are actually soldered to the board um, and a brand new main board in a box on my doorstep Monday morning. That is a level of customer service that even as someone who does reviews for the machines, I haven't had from any other company. I, I genuinely praise Artillery for their aftercare. I've, I've used it a couple of times. It's been good, but you normally have to wait a week, two weeks for your parts. You know, they, they ship it out by the cheapest method possible because they're sending you something for free and you kind of accept that. Fucos FedExed me this. And bearing in mind they got it out on the Saturday, they must have FedExed that overnight from China. Like, I don't understand how it managed to get to my doorstep when it did, but it did. Installed, flashed the firmware, and bosh, worked straight out the gate. Um, really, really pleased with that. So let's just go over a few uh, features of the of the machine. So it has an ultra base um, build build plate, which is one of the ones where you um, you know as it cools down the glass contracts, but the coating on the top doesn't, and it means your prints just pop off when it cools. Um, I've had to use a bit of hairspray on mine, but the bed itself is actually all right. You can flip it over and just use the regular glass on the other side. Held on with these little uh, clips. Now, something I will know if you compare this to something like the Artillery Hornet um, is that, I'm not going to lie, you can't get the Hornet's bed off. So if you damage it, you have to get a scraper underneath and sort of separate it because it's glued to it. This one isn't. A couple of nice bed clips. Pops off. Gleaming. You're away. You could even do it where you have two of these beds. Put this one on. Take it off. Put the next one on and then you can start printing again while that one's cooling down. Um, nice and solid on the Y-axis. It's got dual rails there. They're not linear rails, but that's not really what you expect at this price point. Spool holder's fine, does what it needs to do. Dual Z-axis, touch screen. 
It is a Hamera clone that sits on the front of this. It looks a little bit like a BitQ H2, but it isn't, which means it's super light, but it's got a Volcano hot end. Um, I haven't had any clogs with this at the moment, and I've been printing for a few hours with it. It's turned out some lovely prints, um, and really happy with that. Flat ribbon cables. So you'll recognize these from the likes of, I think the new Viper has flat ribbon cables, but the likes of the Artillery Genius, the Sidewinder, there's a few other machines that are coming out with these flat ribbon cables. They're a little controversial. They're not really supposed to carry the voltage, the hot end handles, but to be honest with you, I haven't had any issues with these. Um, I thought when I assembled it that maybe they were faulty. It wasn't that, it was the main board, so don't worry about it. Um, printing wise, it is pretty silent. The fan inside, let's just turn this on. The fan inside is a little loud, but I mean, it's not horrendous, not really. So in a second, we'll take a look at the prints. But before we take a look at the prints, I want to zoom in and just take a little look at the UI that you get that Fucos has developed on this, because genuinely, it's got a lot in it. There's a lot to see. OK, so obviously we've got the printing thing. That is just everything that's on the SD card. That's very easy to navigate. Because this is an MKS Robin board and an MKS screen, you can actually um, you can actually get it so that they display that they display icons. There's a thing you have to do in your slicer. I haven't done that. Uh, auto load is how you load the filament, so it preheats the nozzle for you, and then it automatically starts to turn the cogs. You cannot do what I suppose you'd call dry feeding, where um, where like on a Titan you'd release the lever arm and just push it through. You do really need to use that auto load feature, but in the settings, so Wi-Fi on this, I'm pretty sure. Um, isn't isn't enabled but it's an mks board you can turn all the things off um machine settings so you can go into the machine machine type you can change everything in here you can change the machine size so that's two three five two three five two fifty so that's all good um you can go homing directions you can change all of them end stop types you can change those there's a lot of settings in here that you normally, so for example, the filament settings, um, you can actually change how it unloads, how it loads, everything in there. The leveling settings, all of the leveling settings, that for, so it's not auto bed level, but it's assisted leveling. So you can do, you can enable your BL touch in here, you can enable auto leveling in here, you can do the literally everything that you need to do you don't need to reflash firmware to do because it's all in the screen so you can configure it all here which is just fantastic um if you then go to the tools you can see you've got the normal stuff preheating moving home leveling filament and everything else that's just uh, loading the filament in um, and if i remember rightly you can even go into advanced here Power off detection mode. Has it got a UPS? Uh, enable pin leveling setting. I have no idea what that is. And printing pause position settings. You can actually, when you when you pause the print, it can you can define in here where you want it to pause. So that's a very powerful UI that, generally speaking, you don't get on most machines. So I really wanted to highlight that before we did anything else. Right. So print quality. So first things first. Let's get this camera to focus. There we go. First things first, this is the calibration cube that it did. The profile that I'm using is actually um, the Artillery Genius profile that I've got with a few little tweaks around retraction and things like that. And I mean, that is as about as good without a lot of finer tweaking as you could ask for. So I'm very happy with that. This is Okay, this broken. is, is that broken? Um, so this is one of the vases from Thingiverse, prints in vase mode, so single line extrusion, nice and consistent all down the sides, a very nice first layer, and all printed really nicely on that. We have the all-in-one print test. So as you can see, the front has printed very nicely. If we can get that into focus, can we? There we go. So the front front is printed very nicely. 
Retraction test, it actually knocked two of the retraction tests off, which isn't ideal, but the retraction tests that are there aren't stringy. Um, we've got down here, we've got the bridging. The bridging did very, very well. The park calling on this is actually really good. Dimensional accuracy is bang on. I don't know if you can see back here. Not really. Oh, there we go. Right there. The overhangs on this are pretty impressive. So on the short overhang, I'd say we're at about 70. And we're also 70 on this overhang as well. Really impressed with that. Then, for something a little taller, we have Mini Badger. Not quite so mini. So you can see the gloss finish that's on the front of that. Very, very good. Done very well with the spool holder. Done very well with the feet done very well with all the overhangs even under the chin so this did have full tree supports on it so it prints like this full tree supports on it but for even things that are on islands like this here like an island of support honestly very 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 good very impressed with that so they were all really nice prints so final thoughts um i like it I like the machine. I love the customer service. So uh, Dora Ding is uh, very active on the community. She's very, very um, keen to, to interact with people, get the Foucault's information shared and things like that. And she's very, very responsive when it comes to um, when it comes to anyone having any issues. She's, you know, helped a lot of people on there. She's a direct representative of Foucault's. So um, so definitely go out and check the uh, check the Foucault's um, Facebook group for some of the prints that people are doing because they're really cool. Um, the machine itself. So I am gonna give this machine an eight out of 10. This is a machine you should buy. Um, it is functionally better than an Ender 3. There's no, there's no two ways about that. This is a better machine than an Ender 3 in almost every conceivable way. It has silent stepper drivers as standard. It's got a good main board. It's got a touch screen. It's got a better bed. It's direct drive. Park calling's better. Aesthetically, it looks nicer. Um, I mean, like, what, what, what really more could you ask for? Because this is a Hemera clone and not another Titan, it's quite considerably lighter than a Titan. And that also means that, um, that this tool head as a direct drive means that it does beat like an artillery genius as well. Um, I'm very impressed with how this machine performs. It does really well out of the box. There are literally six screws, none of which I lost. Um, and you screw them in and away. I mean, okay, the machine is, is foldable, fine. I mean, if you unscrew the screws on any machine, I challenge any machine is foldable, but you unscrew the four screws, you can fold it down. Okay, I mean, it's a feature that no one really asked for, but fine. Outside of that gimmick, the machine is a solid machine. It's not a machine that was built and they went, oh, we're going to make a foldable machine, but it's going to be terrible in other ways. They made a really good machine and then for some reason they had the ability to fold it. Um, I'm honestly really impressed with it. The bed strain relief is good. Um, the cable is all braided and everything. All the connections are nice and easy to do. Um, it's easy to plug in, easy to go together. I, 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 can't, I can't fault it. If I, if I wanted to get a 10, if I wanted to get a 10, this would need to have linear rails. That's, that's where I'm at for a 10, right? Um, something like the FAM 260 that we did before, the 3D Talk one, um, but, with, but with this level of maturity when it comes to the electronics. So this has got, this ticks so many boxes. Um, it prints really nicely. As I say, you have to add a little bit of hairspray to the bed just to get it to just get everything to stick really nicely. Um, but other than that, you can you, you can really get some good results out of this. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Price is 275, 275 US pesos. So it's more expensive than an Ender. There's no way around that. It's nudging close to the Anycubic Viper. Um, and it's very close to something like the Ender, the Ender 3 V3 or whatever it is. Um, solid machine for that price point really really good 
Um, your struggle to find much better in regards to printing quality. Um, you know, you can bump up the you can bump up the budget a bit, and you can go for something like the Viper, which has got auto bed leveling. But to be clear, you can add a BL touch to this, and you don't need to do any of the firmware changes. So you could still you can still get what you want out of out of this with that. Um, I really like it. It's a really nice machine. It's built really well. Ticks a lot of boxes for me. So with that in mind. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to get your hands on a Fucos, it's currently available in the US and it will be available in the UK relatively soon. So, um, so we will put Amazon links below and we'll update the description once, um, once the UK Amazon becomes available. But thanks for joining. Do not forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks very much.